Hi, uh, my name is Vicente Torres. I am a member and former director of the Mayo Clinic Translational Polycystic Kidney Disease Center, and also co-chair of the work group of the Kedigo 2025 Clinical Practice Guideline for the evaluation, management, and treatment of EDPKD. In this video, I would like to share some key takeaways for polycystic liver disease in ADPKD. Polycystic liver disease is the most common extrarenal manifestation of ADPKD. It is characterized by the presence of more than 10 fluid-filled cysts scattered throughout the liver. In addition to being an extrarenal manifestation of ADPKD, it may occur as a distinct genetic entity in the absence of ADPKD. Polycystic liver disease most often causes no symptoms and does not impact on the synthetic or secretory capacity of the liver. In some cases, however, symptoms may develop due to mass defects causing abdominal fullness, distension and mechanical back pain, or compression of other organs such as lungs and stomach or veins such as the hepatic or portal veins or the inferior vena cava or of bile ducts. Symptoms may also occur with cyst hemorrhages and infections. Next, a note about abdominal imaging. Uh, people with ADPKD should have abdominal imaging using ultrasound, CT or MRI to evaluate not only the kidney, but also the liver phenotype. When liver cysts are found, patients should be advised of uh, possible symptoms and likely outcomes. Polycystic liver disease develops earlier and it's more severe in women than in men. Women with polycystic liver disease should be counseled to minimize or avoid sex hormone therapy as appropriate depending on the extent of the disease. Observational studies have shown that exposure to estrogen-containing oral contraceptives is associated with a 15 0.5% greater liver volume for each decade of use. The growth of polycystic livers uh, decreases after menopause, but increases again if estrogen replacement therapy is initiated. Most patients with polycystic liver disease have no symptoms and require no treatment. However, people with polycystic liver disease who experience cyst-related symptoms uh, negatively impacting their quality of life or who have severe disease likely to develop symptoms should receive treatment. The choice of treatment should be based on symptoms, total liver volume, liver cyst characteristics, and treatment availability. It may involve interventional radiology, surgery, or liver transplantation, and should be done at centers of expertise if possible. Long-cutting somatostatin analogs should be given to people with markedly enlarged livers with volume-related symptoms to complement other therapies or when other therapies are not available. Long-cutting somatostatin analogs are usually well tolerated, but some adverse effects, uh, such as gallstones and bradycardia, are possible. Uh, Premenopausal women who experience a faster liver growth than postmenopausal women receive the most benefit. Liver volume and disease-specific symptoms questionnaires, such as the uh, PLDQ and the Polka, may serve uh, to uh, assess treatment outcomes. Liver cyst infections deserve a special comment. They should be suspected in the presence of a triad of fever, localized abdominal pain, and mark elevation of C-reactive protein or leukocytosis. It may be uh, supported by imaging consistent with infection, sometimes requiring 18 uh, fluorodeoxyglucose PET CT scanning, and confirmed by diagnostic features in at least two categories, such as clinical factors and microbiology. Treatment should be initiated promptly with the third generation intravenous cephalosporin with or without a fluoroquinolone. And cis drainage may be required in severe or refractory cases 
or in immunosuppressed patients or for very large cysts. Antibiotics, uh, either intravenous or oral, should be continued for at least four weeks. That concludes our focus on polycystic liver disease in ADPKD. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to explore the entire collection of videos we have assembled on this guideline. We are all very proud of this work and we hope it will meaningfully serve both clinicians and the people we care for around the world. The full clinical practice guideline can be accessed online at www.kedigo.org.